Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerVideoStore.com and KillerPHP.com and other sites. In this video blog, I want to talk about two things. Number one, Flash and how Adobe just effectively killed Flash, and I'll get into that in a second. And uh, mobile development, it's sort of tied in together. Mobile, I'm thinking iPhones, iPads, Androids, etc. So first, let me start with Flash. Last week, Adobe just announced that they were stopping the development of the Flash mobile client. So translated, they're going to stop developing the Flash player that runs in mobile phones. Things like, um, you know, Motorola phones and Blackberries, etc. And of course, iOS doesn't allow that, so you're, not gonna, you're never going to see that on, on the iPhone anyway. So what does that mean? That means that Steve Jobs uh, was right in that, uh, you know, Flash is not something that's viable, I suppose, uh, in a realistic way on the mobile platform. What I mean by that, I mean that Flash is very heavy. It works in Android, and I have an Android Galaxy Tab, um, Galaxy S2 phone, great phone, and uh, but it does take up a lot of juice. It hogs up a lot of energy. It's very energy inefficient, and and on top of that, you have now the quick rise of HTML5 and CSS3, which will allow you to do just about everything you're going to do with Flash. Uh, well, you can't do everything yet, but it's 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 in there, so you will be able to without having to get a special Flash plugin. So even Adobe, the makers of Flash, have acknowledged this, and they're stopping the development of the Flash player on for small devices. So why does this kill Flash? It kills Flash because the future of program of computing rather is in the mobile devices. You see, I'm I got this Galaxy S2 phone with the dual core chip. It's very similar. It's neck and neck with the iPhone 4S in terms of capability. Uh, the larger point is that these phones are now so powerful that they can effectively replace computers for most people, for 99% of things that most people do on computers, spreadsheets, surfing the web, sending emails, creating Word documents, all these things you can do now on these portable devices. So I think in the next few years, you're going to see more and more people are going to be coming out with uh, phones that are your main computer. So you may have a phone, and you put it into a docking station, which has a keyboard and connected to a monitor of some sort, and there's, and there's your uh, and there's your computer. Maybe you have an external hard drive, a little tiny little thing for storage or something, or you may just use the the cloud, iCloud or Amazon or Google have, has a cloud as well. So I think that's where it's going. So if computing is going that direction, you see where Flash is going, and uh, people might be saying, "Well, I don't think." Computers going to go in that direction. What about 3D? What about heavy-duty image manipulation? True. For those type of things, some professionals, a very small group of people, will still want to have very powerful desktop computers. But even now, desktop computer sales are dropping quite a bit. They're actually below now laptop sales. And I think uh, netbooks, for instance, which are those little tiny laptops, they're even getting killed by the tablet PC market, whether it be uh, iPads or Android devices or whatnot. So that's the future. And as a web designer or web developer, you always have to be mindful of wherever market is going. So right now, uh, I would not be investing in Flash. Uh, it's done. Like for us at Killer Sites and the Killer Video Store, we are no longer producing Flash based training videos because I know it's done. And I've seen this many times before. I've been in the web game and the programming game since 1994. Uh, well, 94 is when I built my first website. And I can tell you from experience that technologies come and go. And the people who are sort of married to a particular technology, they'll, 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 they'll claw and scream and 
bellyache and cry like babies about how this great technology and why is it going away it's so cool but you have to sort of be nimble as a professional in this game and understand that things change and you got to go where the moment where the momentum is and not get stuck in a dead-end technology and there's many dead-end technologies out there delphi which was a great language for its day finish classic asp which is microsoft's first uh uh, inter, you know, venture into dynamic page technology. Classic ASP kind of resembles old school PHP, and it had its day, but it's finished. And uh, Flash, it looks like it's one of these technologies that's going away. And if you don't want to be stuck there, now I'm not saying it's going to disappear overnight. It's going to take time, but over the next couple of years, I think you're going to see Flash disappear, especially when Adobe. The makers are, are, abandoning, are abandoning Flash for the mobile platform, which I think is the future of computing and the web. It's all going to be integrated. So there you go. You don't want to touch Flash. Now, in terms of, I mentioned I was going to talk briefly about mobile, about iOS, Android, and the BlackBerry Playbook OS. Now, well, forget about the BlackBerry Playbook OS. It's a great operating system. Rim, you know, I have the Playbook. It's great. It's one of those. It's 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 right up there. I think it's even better than the other two. And insert from a nerd's point of view, but unless BlackBerry gets their act together, I wouldn't be looking at that right now. What you're going to concern yourself with is, of course, uh, iOS, which is for um, Apple iPads and um, iPhones and Android. But in fact, Android is going to become more important very quickly. It already is surpassing Apple in terms of sales uh, so by quite a bit. So you're going to see a lot more Android devices out there uh, in the next couple of years than you will Apple devices. That's clear. Uh, in fact, Samsung, just one company that produces uh, handsets and uh, tablets for Android, they're, just them alone are beating Apple now for the first time. So in terms of sale. So again, looking forward as a web developer, web designer, you got to think Android, iOS, you got to think mobile, and there you go. So, and you got to forget about Flash. So the difficulty with dealing with Android and iOS is that in terms of the core programming languages that are used to develop applications for these two operating systems. Um, Apple's iOS uses Objective-C, which is, uh, it kind of looks like, you know, C++ and Java. It's, it's, you know, it's a C-based language, so. Um, and it's, it's a little bit hardcore. If you're a, a programmer and knows a bit of JavaScript and PHP, it might be a little hard to, to approach. And on the Android side, they use Java, my old uh, fav back in the day. Fav language. Um, again, Java, same thing as Objective-C. It's a little bit more hardcore, so it might be difficult for some people to learn it. Fortunately, uh, well, hold on, let me back up a step. The other problem is that if you develop something in iOS with Objective-C, then you have to develop something else, the same thing in Java for the Android guys, so it's, you know, now there might be programs out there that will translate them back and forth. If they're not already, if they're not already out there, they will be out there very soon. Another option, uh, which could satisfy most people's requirements in terms of building applications for iOS or Android, is to use HTML5 and CSS3. You see, these are universal. They'll run on both platforms very well. And uh, you'll be able to do just about everything you need to do for most people, you, the building applications, HTML5 and CSS3. This we have to explore here at Kyoto Sites a little bit more thoroughly. Of all this consult, talking with uh, my bro who's been doing a heck of a lot of development for blo both platforms. And um, I'm going to have more details about that going forward. Again, all very practical. Uh, for now, though, if you're mindful of that, if you're looking, well, what's the future? You 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 got to learn HTML5 and CSS3. There's no question. That is guaranteed. You got to know. So uh, if you're wondering where to go next, that's where you might want to go. If you're a Flash guy and you're crying now, and you're what you know, 
don't cry, things move on, don't worry about it. You can take what you've learned working with Flash and apply that knowledge to HTML5 and CSS3 and many other things. You gotta learn to be language or platform agnostic. Platform could be like, you know, Flash versus HTML5 versus iOS versus uh, Android. There are nuances between the different uh, platforms and different, there's differences between the different languages. And there's also a lot of common ground because they're all based on the same things. So don't, um, don't cry over spilled milk. You know, all that, ja that flash knowledge you may have, a certain percentage of it, a good percentage of it can be transferred over into HTML5, CSS3, etc. As I did with my Java background, I learned Java first and I was, did a lot of Java work before I even looked at PHP and then I was able to move into PHP really easily because of my Java background amongst other things. So uh, it's all good. It's all good. Again, you know, I think the broader lesson here is be a language agnostic, you know, meaning don't be married to any particular technology or language. Just use what's best given the job at hand. That's it. I hope you find these video blogs useful. I've uh, been a little slack of, of as of late because I've been busy with some other stuff. And one of the things is a whole brand new thing that we're developing uh, at Killer Sites for uh, for learning, which I think is pretty uh, is pretty interesting things, cutting edge, make it even easier to learn this stuff and a lot more fun too. So, uh, ciao.